فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers, my sisters When we joke, yes, we'd like people to laugh Make sure that that laughter is within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The jokes should not be blasphemous They should not be abusive or hurtful to any race, to any religion, to any group of people And more than anything, they should not be disrespectful to Allah, to the signs of Allah, to the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The reason is, if we do that, we will lose contentment If we happen to joke about a race we happen to joke about a nationality, we happen to joke about people in a way that it would hurt them, and or we happen to joke such that we are blaspheming Allah, mocking or joking about the messengers, about heaven and hell, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is crossing a limit and we pay the price. What is the price? You lose happiness, you lose contentment, you lose sleep. As much as you laughed, you will have to cry. Remember that. So laughter can result in crying later on if that laughter is unrestricted but if it is restricted and disciplined you will definitely be able to earn the pleasure of Allah and perhaps at the same time you know a, a sharing a light moment of laughter so this we get from the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in Surah At-Tawbah where there were people who were claiming to have joked about the Prophet peace be upon him and the messengers and later on they actually were proven guilty and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in verse number 65 of Surah At-Tawbah وَلَئِن سَأَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَلْعَبُ قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ If you were to ask them, they would say, we were just joking, we were just speaking, you know, indulging in speech, playing, etc., etc. Allah says, tell them, are you joking about Allah and His messengers and His signs? Don't present your excuses. You pay the price of it, subhanAllah. You pay the price of dirty jokes, bad jokes, unclean jokes, blasphemous jokes. Remember that. So you're searching for contentment? Clean your act. The next time someone sends you a joke on WhatsApp, if it is dirty, if it is abusive, delete it. You will be a very content person. Allah will take away the reasons for you to be crying later on. But if you get the joy by making people laugh at that which is dirty, abusive, blasphemous, then you have to be ready to pay the price. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify us. It costs you nothing. A little bit of control of your nafs and you're set. A little bit of control of your desires and you're okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that strength. Delete the bad messages. Don't forward them and Allah will open your doors. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important it is to appreciate things people do, no matter how small they are. Because Allah Himself appreciates what people do, no matter how small things are. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a companion who brought about a charity of a few dates. He worked all night, he earned a little bit, he brought half of what he earned and presented it to the messenger saying, this is my contribution to the cause of Allah. There were certain hypocrites sitting around and they laughed. Allah cleared the, this man's name, praised him so much and Allah declared his enmity and anger upon those who had laughed and scoffed at this particular person. So if Allah appreciates a few dates in his cause, who are we not to appreciate a small act of kindness that is done in our direction? If you'd like contentment, learn from this. When someone does good, don't forget it. How many people we have done good to, they've forgotten. But we don't realize how many people have done good to us and we have forgotten. So it goes both ways. Don't forget the goodness someone has done to you, even if it was a very small portion of goodness because Allah doesn't forget and Allah rewards in a massive way so we need to understand this. Secondly, 
Don't ever scoff at someone's contribution to the deen. The 50 cents that someone could have put in a donation box may be more valuable in the eyes of Allah than the 5,000 that another could have donated with a check. You don't ever scoff or laugh at someone who is trying their best to get close to Allah. But I want to take this further. It's not only about charity. It's also about religious movement in the right direction. You have people struggling struggling to get closer to Allah in their obedience, perhaps because of the environment they live in, their families, the way they grew up, the countries they are living in, perhaps something that may or may not have happened, perhaps whatever they may have studied, they are slowly and surely coming. As they are improving their condition, don't belittle them, don't, don't misjudge them, don't make them feel like they are unwanted. Keep on encouraging them, keep on saying good words to them, they will come. Some of our sisters are struggling with their obedience to Allah in various ways. Ways. We're all struggling actually. Some of our struggles are made apparent and some are hidden struggles. The hidden struggles are more difficult to tackle. A person who's, for example, perhaps addicted to something that's wrong, say for example pornography or uh, drugs, whatever else it may be, that person who is trying to rehabilitate himself or herself with that hidden struggle, it's far more difficult than a person who might be finding it difficult to dress with the hijab, for example. We should not belittle anyone. If we belittle their effort, we will lose contentment. Allah will test us in ourselves, perhaps our family members, whoever else, because we were belittling someone else's effort. The, the, the main point is they are trying in their own way. Some people move a millimeter as a, at a time, some move a centimeter at a time, some a meter, some a kilometer, a mile, whatever it may be. Don't belittle the effort of someone in the right direction. When people come to the masjid, no matter what, they have come to the house of Allah. Make them feel wanted, make them feel comfortable, uh, greet them, welcome them. They are the guests of Allah. You will have contentment because you were welcoming people to the house of Allah. You will achieve contentment because you were welcoming people to the house of Allah. When you have an Islamic program, a good lecture, something good, you may find all sorts of people coming, welcome them. You are welcoming people whose hearts are softening towards Allah. How can you use a word that is negative? How can you discourage people and you still expect Allah to give you contentment? That's not going to happen. Allah will snatch that contentment away from you. How dare you make the guests of Allah feel unwanted in the house of Allah that belongs to Allah. Nothing can change that. That's the house of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 79 of Surah At-Tawbah, الذين يلمزون المطوعين من المؤمنين في الصدقات والذين لا يجدون إلا جهدهم فيسخرون منهم سخر الله منهم ولهم عذاب أليم. A very scary verse indeed where Allah says those who make a mockery of the, of the others who have struggled and strove brought back a little bit of charity and they have given only that which they were able to give. They have done only that which they were able to do within their own little capacities. Those who scoffed at them, Allah will create reason to scoff at them too. Which means you scoff at someone, Allah will scoff at you. You, you laugh at someone, Allah will create the environment for you to be laughed at. Where is your contentment? It's gone because you hurt someone. You thought bad and evil about someone. Watch out, my brothers and sisters. This is a powerful reminder. Imagine for Allah to say, Sakhirallahu minhum. Allah will create a mockery of those people. How? They may be able to, to manage or overcome your mockery, but you will never be able to overcome the mockery that Allah will create of you. So please bear this in mind. You want contentment? Clean your heart. You want a clean heart? You're going to have to work very, very hard. Learn to love people. They are also dear to Allah. And guess what? Perhaps they are dearer to Allah than you and I. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We move on to the next verse also from Surah Al-Anfal where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the benefit of the zakah and the charity that is taken from the Muslims. You and I know two and a half percent we have to give. At times it's a little bit more than that, 5%, 10%, even up to 20% when it comes to mining and various other uh, aspects of uh, earning. So my brothers and sisters, what does this zakah actually do to us? 
it brings about contentment when you have given with a good heart, open heart. When you are calculating your zakat and you're being miserly, you will not achieve goodness. You may fulfill your farad act, your obligation, but what goodness do you want? When you're calculating your zakat and you give out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's actually beautiful. Allah will bless you and Allah will grant you contentment by cleansing you. So listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, verse number 103 of Surah At-Tawbah. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ Allah starts off by saying, take from their wealth this sadaqah, this charity, this zakat that will cleanse them. It will cleanse them. You know, when you're earning, sometimes you say things, you do things, and you earn money, you're busy doing things, you, you've delayed your salah a little bit. May Allah forgive every one of us. Allah says there is an element of dirt in the wealth. Your attachment to the wealth is an unclean attachment. Don't let your attachment to wealth divert you from your attachment to Allah. When you give what Allah gave you, you are actually detaching and cleansing. Imagine, this is why it's important to give more than just the compulsory zakat. Zakat is actually Allah's amount that you are asked to take out of your amount. You've taken it out. If you take it out with a good heart, you will achieve. If you haven't, you lose. But over and above that is a test for you to see whether you'd like to reach out to people with what Allah's blessed you with. A lot of the times the wealthier people become, the more miserly they become the more difficult it is for them to give a good business deal to a small person, the more difficult it is for them to see another person do well in a similar business, the wealthier we become, the more we need to work on ourselves. Obviously, this is not the case with everyone, but it is the case with a lot of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. So the next time you're calculating your zakah and you give it, give it with a good heart, with happiness, try and ensure that you're giving the people in need. They are doing you a favor. Allah did you a favor by creating people who have a need so that you could engage in an act of worship known as giving charity. Had Allah not created poor people, you would have never been able to become pure by giving and donating what you had. May Allah grant us contentment and may Allah grant us Jannah. أَقُولُ قَوْلِي هَذَا وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَبَارَكَ عَلَى نَبِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ <تصفيق> لا تطمئن القلوب